Welcome to our review on immunity and immunization. So first thing we actually need to understand then is that our body is designed to prevent infections from even getting inside us. And the way that it does that is by having various barriers. So what we actually have are things like our skin, which is going to stop any microorganisms getting inside our body. If we're ingesting things, then we've got the stomach acid inside our stomach, which will kill any microbes that get there. We've got mucus that lines our airways, which will trap microbes and prevent them getting any deeper into our respiratory system. We've got our tears that contain enzymes to break down anything that gets onto the surface of our eyes. And if we have clot ourselves, then what we find is that our blood has the ability to clot to then obviously seal the wound and prevent any microbes getting inside us. Despite us having all those barriers, every so often, one of these pathogens will get inside our body. And at that point, we go into our second line of defense, which is the immune system. And the primary part of our immune system are the white blood cells. And what we've actually got inside our body are two different types of white blood cell. We've got the phagocytes, which are the ones that engulf and digest the pathogen. And then we've got the lymphocytes, which produce antibodies or antitoxins to that particular pathogen. So remember those two different types of white blood cell, phagocytes engulf and digest, and the lymphocytes produce antibodies or antitoxins. When we're talking about an antibody, what we're referring to is a protein first of all, and it's a type of protein that's going to be specific to one particular bacteria or one particular virus. So what we find is that you've got different antibodies for each of those different bacterial viruses that you encounter in your life. Once you've actually recovered from that infection, then you do have immunity to it. So if that exact same pathogen entered your body again, your body would be able to make the antibodies very quickly. And that means that the pathogen would actually be destroyed before you feel ill. And this is how our immunity actually works. So that once you've been exposed to one of these pathogens with its specific antigens on the surface, then your body will recognize it and be able to make those complementary antibodies very quickly. So we'll destroy it before we actually get ill. Something that you've all experienced at some point in your life is an immunization. Now, the whole idea behind immunization is to make someone immune to the disease without them actually having to have it. So immunizations you might know as vaccination more commonly and obviously what we're doing here is we're going to be injecting a small amount of that particular pathogen so that our body builds up this immunity to it without us having to get ill. What we find though is that some of these pathogens are not so easy to deal with through vaccination programs and that's down to the fact that some viruses are able to mutate very rapidly and a really good example about this is the flu. So what we'll find is that just because you've had the flu once doesn't mean that you won't get it again. Because what we find is as soon as you've had that flu, it may mutate into a different type and therefore you're going to be prone to that infection once more. So what we actually find is every single year when they offer the flu vaccine, they've actually generated a new vaccine for that particular year based on the most likely types of flu that will be around that particular year. So because those flu viruses do mutate rapidly, every year we need a new flu vaccine to take care of them. Two key terms we should be aware of when thinking about diseases and their spread. First one is an epidemic. So whenever we're referring to an epidemic of a disease, we're talking about a disease that's able to spread across a country. If we're talking about something more serious, one of these diseases that's able to spread across entire continents or maybe even the whole world, what we're referring to there is a pandemic. We'll experience two different types of immunity. The first one is active immunity. Now, whenever we've got active immunity, our body is making its own antibodies. So this would be what we'd experience after an infection or after a vaccination. The second one is passive immunity. Now, passive immunity is where we don't make our own antibodies. The antibodies we've got have been injected into us. So what we actually find is a big difference between our passive and active immunity is that the passive immunity is very limited in the time it lasts. 
active immunity lasts much longer.